easy to see With every morning there's a new Presence that is here now. Bring me to my knees somehow. Stir your spirit in me right now. My eyes lift, my heart turns to you. The way and the life and the truth Praise your name Highly exalted Jesus you are all I need I need
I feel your spirit moving right now It's your presence that is here now Bring me to my knees somehow Stir your spirit in me right now I bring my pain I bring my sorrow I lay it all down today You give me hope Covered in your grace My sins wash Sorrow, I lay it all down today. You give me hope, covered in your grace. My sins washed away. I feel your spirit moving around now. It's your presence that is here now. Bring me to my Your love is enough, it's all that I need Oh, your love is enough 
You shine 
What an awesome song to start with, just declaring that our God is for us. Nothing can come against us. Amen? We're so glad that you're with us today on New Hope Church Online. Glad that you're joining us, and we would love for you, if you are new, to fill out one of our Connect cards. There's a link below, either in Facebook or in on YouTube. You can fill that out and just give us a little bit of information so that we can pray for you, we can connect with you, and move forward in discipleship with you. We love you, church, and we're so excited for what God is doing here at New Hope. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you. We thank you for being a God that is bigger than all things, greater than all things. No matter what we're going through, you are bigger than that, and you're bigger than it with love and compassion and joy and peace and patience and kindness, and you love us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your name this day. Would you just continue to move in our homes, continue to move in this place as we worship you, as we declare that you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'm just going to continue to worship. Great are you, Lord. He's the giver of life, giver of love. Sing this with me. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. today and shouting your praises.
us up this morning, Lord Jesus. Make us up to praise you with all that we are. of us feel dry, we feel uh, alone, maybe abandoned, that you would reach into us and breathe new life, Lord. Breathe. Breathe out of the breath that you've given us in these lungs to bring new life to us and to bring new life to those around us. Lord, give us the sight, your sight, to reach out to those who are feeling dry, Lord, so that we can bring them back, just as you called Ezekiel to prophesy over those dry bones. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Light, the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Good morning. 
So kids, have you ever been lying in your bed at night, frightened by the dark? But as soon as someone turns on a light, instantly, you feel better. Everything in your room becomes visible to the light. There is great power in light because light overtakes the darkness. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Boys and girls, when we share the love of Jesus with others, when we use our words and our actions to shine the light of Christ by being kind, by speaking words of encouragement, when we praise and worship God in the good times and in the bad times, other people will see these good deeds and wonder what power is behind our words and actions. At this point, boys and girls, you can point them to Jesus, the source, the true source of all light. And guess what? When you point people to Jesus, guess who gets the glory? God. God gets the glory. Boys and girls, we live in a world where many people live in darkness. But when you shine your light for all people to see, God works through you to expel the darkness and lead others to him for his glory. So this morning's bottom line is this. Shine your light for all to see so that God can get all the glory. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that your light expels the darkness. Lord, help us to shine our light to others so that you may be glorified, Jesus. In your name, amen. Amen. I want to teach you a new song today. Here we go.
praise you, Lord. Praise your name. Move in our hearts, move in our homes. Move in us today, Lord Jesus. Move in ways that we, we didn't even expect, Lord. In unique ways for the unique people that you've made us to be. Move in us, Lord. We praise your name. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for meeting us right where we are. Praise you. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. morning church. Three guesses as to which one of those words we're going to talk about today. Good morning church. I'll give you a little hint. The name of this series that we're jumping into today is called the church plus our worship equals a movement. Church plus worship equals movement. I wanted to wear my I like to connect with others shirt today because I think it's very fitting to this message but I got a great story for you. Uh, we've been trading off who goes to the grocery store. We used to go together as a family, sometimes just me and Lisa, but now we're just doing it uh, one of us at a time. And so I decided to give her a break and, and, and go, and usually that doesn't work out. And here's why. Because I call her every second saying, which type of milk did you want? Which type of eggs did you want? Which type of cheese did you want? But I'm so thankful, and I don't know if this was around pre quarantine, staying at home or not, but Kroger has this thing where you go on and you make a list on their website and then they tell you which aisle to find that in. It's amazing. It still took me like two hours to get 30 things or whatever, but it was amazing because I didn't have to call her every second. But I thought, I'm going to go to the store during this weird time and I'm going to wear my mask and, and I'm going to wear my gloves. i got a black mask and black gloves. I thought, what shirt can I wear that would really get a laugh? And I thought, this is the one. This is the one. I like to connect with others. Because it's such a weird kind of paradigm that we're in that I'm going with my gloves on and my mask on and going shopping and have this, this shirt that says I like to connect with others. And I'm telling you, I got some of the, the most hilarious looks on people's faces. Even though they have masks on, you can see their eyes. And you can see they think it's funny and, or they think it's odd or whatever. And I got a few actual chuckles. Um, and what was great is I had an opportunity to just talk to people and say, how are you doing? Um, you know, and it was, it was really, really cool. So that has absolutely nothing to do with this message. Uh, but the shirt does. And I wanted to kind of share with you <laughs> about that story. I love that story. Before we get started, I just want to acknowledge what an amazing Easter service we had last week. It was just amazing from all ends of the spectrum. We, uh, the worship team did a great job. The tech team did a great job. But here's the deal. The same God that we praised and worshiped last Sunday is the same God that is here today. The same God. He was risen then. He's risen now. And so I'm believing and expecting that God's going to do amazing things today just like he did last week. There's no doubt that this is a difficult time for all of us right now. There's no doubt but I thought I'd start this morning by focusing on the positives that are coming out of this strange time in our history. Our families are together more. That's an incredible gift that we've been given to spend more time with our families. Our extended families are connecting more than ever. If you've heard my family story before, you know that, that my siblings and I are not really close. We love each other dearly, but we just didn't have that close, tight family bond. But, but, during this time, I've reached out to them more than I ever have before. And I've, just the other day, got to talk with my dad, FaceTime with my dad in, in the nursing home. You all know he has Alzheimer's. And just weird times, just weird times. But I've connected more with them now than ever. Neighbors are reaching out to each other. Literally across the fences and, and going door to door and leaving something on the front porch. And what can I do to help? And People are returning to or coming into a new faith with Jesus Christ. You know, we've had more than four times 
the amount of people that normally attend here at New Hope, attending every week at New Hope online. God is doing amazing things. Compassion is becoming more the norm. And love is winning out over hate. These things are happening all around us. Just keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open to what's going on. This morning as we begin this two-week series on the church and worship, can I just say that you, the church, have become my illustration? You know, pastors like to use illustrations, right? You are the illustration for today. From serving on this worship team and tech team every week to getting these services into your homes to staying connected in in our online virtual connect groups. You know, I'm the connections pastor. I got this shirt from one of our uh, connect groups. And it's just odd right now that we're meeting online. But can I tell you what an amazing uh, time I've been having in my own personal connect group and, and the stories that I've heard from other connect groups. This is a time where we need each other more than ever. And so if you have not yet signed up for a summer connect group, go online and do that. We need each other during this time. Taking care of each other's needs within your groups and the broader community out there to continuing to give your tithes and offerings during this difficult time. And look, I know the easy thing to do would be to say, I, I, I can't give right now. But you're, you're giving. So church, you are, you are making my illustration today. You are being the church. And that's what we're going to dig into today. The church plus our worship equals a movement. Romans 12, 1 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. If there's one thing I've learned about the church, it's that when the church is being the church, our worship overflows into every aspect of our lives. Not just when we're in here on Sunday mornings, not just when we're watching on television, these services, it overflows in everything that we do. So in order to talk about what the church is, we need to go back and look at what the church was. And then we're going to fast forward and look at what the church will be. What I find really amazing about what's happening during our current situation is that we, the church, are really going back to our roots. I mean, going way back to our roots. Did you know that the early church did not start meeting in a building until around the 4th century? They met in homes. Does that sound familiar? We're all meeting in homes now. But that's exactly what the early church did. Paul says this in Romans chapter 16. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. They had church in their home. And this is just one of many examples in the Bible. And when they gathered, they did, they did primarily three things. And one of those things we do every single week here at New Hope, and I know you're doing them in your homes today, and that's communion. It says this in the book of Acts, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul teaches the early church on on how to examine yourself to properly take part in the Lord's Supper. I encourage you to go look at that, 1 Corinthians 11. So they did communion together, the Lord's Supper together. And then the second one is is this, uh, uh, the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So they broke bread together, they taught the apostles' teaching, and then they prayed. They all joined together constantly in prayer. I love that verse from the book of Acts. I also love another one that says, pray without ceasing. They were constantly praying and communing with each other and learning from each other. And I say from each other because here's another interesting thing to note. The early church knew nothing of clergy. They knew nothing of of pastors. This type of leadership came to existence much later. In that time, every Christian, men and women, is a priest. And they can offer up spiritual sacrifices such as communion 
and prayers. And that's what's beautiful about what's happening in our homes right now is, is I'm sure that some of you who have children in your homes that you're letting them pass out the communion elements and then, and then uh, you're, each of you are maybe trading off who's praying and, and it, it's, it's building solidarity with the early church. 1 Peter 2.5 says, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to say this in verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. I love that you are chosen, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You are a priest. One final element of the early church that I'm seeing again is this idea of what is mine is yours. If I can help you in any way, I, I'm going to help you. And I'm seeing that more and more during these weeks that we're all stuck at home, staying at home and quarantined. I'm sure that you've been the recipient of, of some of those gifts as well as the giver as well. Not only did they give to those in need, but they, they sacrificed their own possessions to help others that need it more. They sold things to be able to help Church, I've seen it. I've seen it happening in our community more over these last few weeks than I can ever remember. So when we're down, when we're discouraged, when we're frustrated, just remember these things. Recall what, what, what you're thinking about right now, those things that are happening in your life that are good and that are positive. Recall those things and, and, and thank God for them because He's doing amazing things in and around us. From business owners helping out their employees to, to people reaching across the yard to help a neighbor, acts of kindness are all around us. So why I go back and talk about the early church? Because it's important to be reminded, listen to me, it's important to be reminded that we don't need this building. Man, I'm thankful for this building. I'm thankful for the amazing sound system that we have and the, and the beautiful pews that we have and, and all, all about the cafe that we have. I'm so happy and thankful for those things. But we don't need this building because we are the church. And look, in recent days, we're, we're building solidarity with our early Christ followers to declare that, that no matter what we're going through, and we're all going through something right now, the church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. Can I get an amen? Amen. The church of Christ is, is alive and well. So let's, let's move forward a little bit and now talk about what the church is. <clears throat> let's take a quick look at what the dictionary says. I, I can be a bit of a word nerd. <laughs> I've got uh, my mother-in-law, who was an English teacher. I've got my father-in-law, who's a, a professor, who was a professor, and my wife is a teacher. And uh, I, since I got married 25 years ago, I just have slowly become this word nerd. And I love to look things up in the dictionary and just see uh, the different definitions because a lot of words have like 20 definitions. And this one has 14. The word church has 14 definitions in the dictionary that I was using. We're going to take a look at the first three. And kids, you're getting a history lesson today? Check. You're getting a vocab lesson today? Check. So tell your parents you don't need to do any more schoolwork for the rest of the week, all right? <laughs> all right. So number one, church is a building for public Christian worship. Number two, public worship of God or a religious service in such a building to attend church regularly. I attend church. And number three, the whole body of Christian believers, Christendom. Thankfully, one of these 14 definitions got it right. If you think you know it, just yell it at your TV screen right now. Just yell it out. <laughs> That's right. Number three, the church is not the building. The church is the people. The church is you. The church is me. This is why I call you the church. This is why I say good morning, church. I'm not expecting these walls to cry out to me and say, good morning, Mark. No, you are the church. Good morning, church. Throughout Scripture, the church is referred to several different 
terms. I, I encourage you to do a personal study on, on church in the Bible. But today I want to I hang out on one of those references. And one of those is the body. Right? The church is the body of Christ. The Bible says that he is the head while we are the body. It's this reference that we really get an idea of, of how much he loves us. I don't know about you, but, but when I love someone, I love to give them gifts. Right? Last week was Easter. How many of you got an Easter basket last week, right? For those of you that didn't, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but we love to give gifts. Uh, I've got a 17-year-old daughter and a 21-year-old daughter, and, and uh, also my daughter's fiancé is living with us right now in his 20s, and they all got Easter baskets. And they got Easter baskets filled with things that they love. I love to give gifts to, the, to those that I love, but, but here's the thing. More than that, I love to give gifts to my kids that, that help their gifts come out, help their, their gifts come to the surface. My kids uh, love art. They're very gifted in art. And so we've, over the years, have gotten them markers, and we've gotten them uh, sketch pads, and we've gotten them paints and, and various things to help bring out those gifts in them. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 12 to help us get a, a better picture of this. It says, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Then it goes on in verse 14 to say, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body. He arranged them, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. And why have we been given these gifts? To worship the head, to worship Christ by using our gifts for the church, for each other. We've been given these gifts to worship him and to serve each other, which ultimately is serving Christ. You see, in these unprecedented times, these next few verses, they really, really ring true. Imagine that, that there's scripture that we can go to during difficult times says this, but God has so composed the body that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Do you get the picture? I mean, do you really get the picture? Not only is the, the church defined by its people, the people are all uniquely equipped to serve the head of the body, which is Christ. God loves his church so much that he gifted it with everything that it needs for a full, complete life of community. I, I hope and pray that I've gifted my kids with things over the years that will help build them into Christ followers, into well-rounded, amazing young women. You see, this, this place is not a place full of robots mindlessly making their way here or, or now to your television <laughs> every week to fulfill their duties and then mindlessly go home or, or after the service to your dining room or wherever you're going to go. No, this is a vibrant place full of unique people. Aren't you glad that you're unique? Unique people all creating a beautiful, colorful tapestry of differences all working together towards the same end goal. And that same end goal is worship. The church plus our worship equals a movement. And it's worship of something other than ourselves, other than yourself, the God that created them in all of their uniqueness. That is who we were created to worship.
And with this era of social distancing, quarantine, and safe at home, all these words that we never, phrases we never knew until a couple months ago, now more than ever we are called to be the body of Christ in very unique ways. And, and look, as a creative person, this excites me. You get to be unique about how you're going to serve others and how you're going to worship. As you're watching the service from your homes today, I'd love to hear about these things. Just put them in the comments, and, and whether you're on YouTube or in Facebook, and just let us know how people have been uniquely serving you during this time and how you have uniquely been the body of Christ to others. We want to hear that. Now, what does the Bible say about those gifts? In the book of 1 Corinthians, it says, Now there are varieties of gifts. There's a bunch of gifts. But the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service. There's a lot of different ways to serve. But the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities. We all love different things. But it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the, through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the ability to, to distinguish between spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these... This is what you need to hear. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each individually as He wills. Such an amazing God that created all these gifts and gives them out, lavishly gives them out to all of us, but uniquely based on how He uniquely made us. You have specific, unique gifts. And just as it brings me joy when the gifts that we give our kids help to bring out their unique talents, God is pleased when the gifts he gives us brings out the very best of who he made us to be. Especially when we use those gifts together with the rest of the body. When we come together alongside each other and say, look, I can't do that very well, but I can do this, and, and you can do that, and, and let's put it together and, and do this. There's power in that. I know you've been a part of that before where you're like, no, I, I can't. Look, Mike is an amazing artist. I, I'm not. So we, we put that together, and, and we just did a devotional where we did some music, and, and he shared his art, and, and we, we worked together using our gifts. How many of you have ever been fishing before? Did you grow up fishing? Well, I wouldn't call myself a fisherman, but I grew up fishing. We had, we had uh, family land in Texas, and we had a place called Turkey Creek that we would go out and go fishing. And, and let me just tell you a little bit about West Texas fishing. It's bobber fishing. Now, it's not the only way that you can fish there, but it's the way that, that most do. And here, here's what happens. You go, you get your rod, your reel, and you, uh, you got a hook on the end, and you put the, uh, the worm or the um, whatever kind of insect you've got, and then the bobber is at the top of that, and you just throw that out, and you sit in the boat. And you wait, and you wait, and you might get lucky and the bobber goes down, or you might jerk on it when it just is going with the wind. And some people love that. But for a 10-year-old boy, I was bored to tears. And this is probably why I'm not a fisherman to this day. But then I moved to Alaska many, many, many years later. I lived there for nine years, and there's fishing there that, that's called uh, combat fishing. It's a little bit different. When you go during salmon season in Alaska, there, there are fish all around you. Literally, you can see like a sea. When it's, when it's time for the reds, you can see a, just a sea of red in the water, and it's all salmon. And it's just like, and what makes it combat is you're like three feet away from somebody else, and they're three feet away from somebody else, and they're three feet away. It's exciting. So, so let's contrast those two types of fishing. Bobber watching <laughs> is what it is. In the boat, it's comfortable. It's slow-paced. It's relaxing. And like I said, for a 10-year-old kid, it was boring. Very boring. But combat fishing, outside of the boat, it's messy. I'm not going to lie. It can be messy. It's challenging. It's fast-paced. By its very nature, it's exciting. 
And let me tell you again, I am not much of a fisherman, but I much prefer that type of fishing that is active. And church, here's what I want you to get out of that. It's time to get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Be active. The church plus our worship equals a movement. Movement. That's what happens when the church comes together and worships. Not just here on Sunday morning when we're, we're singing out praises, but we worship through everything in our lives. There's a movement. And it's active. And it's fast-paced. And it's exciting. And yes, it's messy. But when the church is being the church, when we are worshiping in every aspect of our lives, there will be a movement. The question is, are you moving forward? Are you moving backward? Or are you not moving at all? As I was preparing for this message, I took a little poll as to what the church means to people. Here are just a few thoughts that you had. Refuge. Healing. Safety. Protection. Discovery. Common connection, which goes with this one, like-minded people. Hope, restoration, welcoming, a place to belong, love. But here's the deal. Each one of these attributes exists as a result of the church. You, not the church, this building. No one comes here and comes into the building and goes, that was such a welcoming building. Such a loving, comforting building. They might say that that building looks really nice, and that might even draw them in here. But when they get in here, they're going to say, no, it's a welcoming church, one of the most welcoming churches I've ever been to, which, look, New Hope, good on you. This is one of the most welcoming churches ever. But that's not because of this building. It's because of you being the church. It's the most loving church. That's you. The church of Jesus Christ, his body, his, his people is a place where his love is richly poured out on us. And then look, we get to then richly pour it out on others. That's how it works. I accept this love from Jesus, this gift from him, and then I give it out to others using the unique gifts that he's given me. And I encourage you, church, during this challenging time where you wake up every morning going, what are they going to tell me now? I'm so frustrated. I'm so angry. I'm so whatever it happens to be, look for ways to be the church, the church that is so welcoming, the church that is so loving, the church that is so caring and compassionate. Look for those ways and be that to anyone you come in contact with. And I would even encourage you to do this. If you have not yet even met your neighbors, just go knock on their door, step back, and when they open the door, just say, you know what, I just wanted you to know that if you need anything, I'm here. That's all you got to do. And then say, have a good day. As we wrap up this time together, I wanted to quickly move forward a bit. You know, we've talked about what the church was, and we've talked about what the church is, and now I want to look at what the church will be. It's not often that we can look into the future, right, and, and declare with confidence of what something will be in the next few weeks or, or months or years. We can't often do that, but I can tell you with confidence that right now, we can do that. We can say what the church will be. In an article by notable pastor and author Kerry Newhoff, he lays out 10 predictions about the future church. And I'm just going to list five of those today. And these are in no particular order, but I wanted to, to talk about these five. The first one is this. The potential to gain is still greater than the potential to lose. Think about that. During our efforts to social distance, and in many ways I've seen us grow closer than ever before, which is, doesn't make sense, right? We're, we're staying at home and we're not getting near anybody, but we are truly getting closer to each other, be it social media, be it on the phone, be it talking to your neighbors. We're growing closer. So the potential to gain is still greater than the potential to lose. The second one is this, the gathered church is here to stay. Though live streaming is incredible, and I'm so thankful for it, and I know you're, you're thankful for it this morning, but look, the gathered church is here to stay. There will be a time when we come back together and worship together as the church. Third one is this. Consumer Christianity will die 
and the more selfless discipleship will emerge. Again, I've seen more selfless acts in these last few weeks, and I'm believing and expecting, right? It says in Psalm 5 that we wait in expectation. We're doing a lot of waiting, but I'm expecting and believing that we're going to be become a more selfless people, more compassionate, more loving. Sundays will become more about what we give than what we get. Just let that one sink in. Church is not about us. It is you. But it's not about our our needs and, and we have to have the music this way and we have to have this that way and this that way. Sundays will become more about what we can give than what we can get. And look, let's expand that a little bit. Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and the whole week we will be the church to anybody and everybody that we come in contact with. And we will give rather than asking what we can get. The next one, the last one here is gatherings will be smaller and larger at the same time. Over these last few weeks, I've seen at least four times, sometimes, I think one week we even had like six times the amount of people joining us on New Hope Online than are here on a typical Sunday morning. And that just tells me that God is moving during this time. And so I know that a lot of you out there today are guests to New Hope, and we are so glad that you're with us. But here's the thing that I'm learning through this, is that gatherings are going to become smaller and larger at the same time. We need our smaller groups of our families worshiping together, and we need our smaller groups of our connect groups worshiping together. And, And yet we need to come in here as a large group and worship together. And that's what we're longing for, is coming back together. But the church is growing smaller and larger at the same time. And then there's that word again, move. Everything's moving forward through our family gatherings, through our connect groups, through our neighbors, through our coworkers. We're moving forward as the church. And just in case you haven't put all the pieces of the puzzle together yet, what the church was and what the church is and what the church will be is the same thing. It's the same thing. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So next time, next time you find yourself telling someone that you're going to church, I challenge you to say this, I'm going to be with the church. And they may like step back and go, wait, don't you mean you're going to church? Don't you go to that church that's on Wilson Pike and you know, New Hope Community? Don't you go to that church and just say, look, no, I go to be with the church at the building that is New Hope. And I'm believing that when you say that, it's going to take people back and they're going to question that a little bit and it will open the door for you to share the love of Christ with them. I'm going to be with the church. Here's the deal. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The church plus worship equals a movement. And Jesus is the head of of the body. The body is the church, us. So wherever the head goes is where I go. Wherever Jesus goes, I will follow. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. We sang a song earlier that's going to be the theme of these next two weeks, this week and next week. Its words speak so perfectly to the heart of who we are as the church and as worshipers in all that we do. So again, Jesus is the head, we are the body. So when we sing this song, when you move, darkness runs for cover. You can just as easily say when the church moves, because when he moves, we move. When he moves, we move. When the church moves, darkness runs for cover. When the church moves, no one's turned away. Because where the church is, fear turns into praises. And where the church is, no heart is left unchanged. When you move, the outcast finds a family. When you move, when the church moves, the orphan finds a home. Lord, here we are. Oh, teach us to love mercy. With humble hearts, we bow at your throne. So come, 
Jesus, come and move. The church, move. Let justice roll on like a river. Let worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. When Christ is moving, when we, the church, are moving, things will never be the same again. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, friends, co-workers, neighbors, when we're all moving together as the church, life will never be the same again. But look, you got to get out of the boat. you got to move. Get in the current. Be the church. And next week we're going to talk about our worship. And those combined brings a movement. So come back next week. We're going to dive deeper into worship I'm really looking forward to this, and I can't wait to be with you again next week as we see how God uses our unique gifts to let worship turn into revival. Would you pray with me? God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to be a part of you. You are the head, and we are the church. So, Lord, I just pray that you would help us to get that visual, Lord, that wherever you're going, we are going. Wherever you're moving, we are moving. Lord, I'm thankful for what's happening in our homes today. For families worshiping together and serving each other together and praying together. And I just pray that this time, this odd time in our history, Lord, will grow us closer to each other in our families, in our relationships, and just in places we'd never even expected. Just our relationships would grow stronger and stronger and stronger through it. And Lord, I'm believing and expecting that you're going to do some very unique things that we don't even see yet. So Lord, through it all, help us to step into who we are as the church and to worship you through every aspect of our life. To bring a movement that will knock down every wall and will praise you and glorify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. At this time in our worship service, we're going to take communion. I want to thank Pastor Mark for that message of this part one of the series. I'm excited for part two next week that he's going to be bringing to us the church plus worship equals movement. And um, as, as we enter into this time of communion together, I want to share with you that communion is for the body of Christ. Pastor Mark talked a lot about the body of Christ and Christ being the head of the church and then us being the body. Um, Christ gave up his body for us, for the church. So it is for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But what I want to do is give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus and you want to be a part of his body, the body of Christ, that's all about love, all about grace, And Jesus just wants to wrap his arms around you and show you that love and grace. I just want you to say this prayer after me, and then then you can take communion with us. So while others are preparing and getting ready with the elements, the bread, and and the, the juice that they're going to drink for this time, if you don't know Jesus, say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I love you. I thank you for your word, but I thank you for what you did for me on the cross, that you died for my sins. So Lord, I repent of those sins. I walk away from them, and I give my life and my heart to you. I thank you for the ways, Lord, that you've loved me and never left me. So Lord, now I give my heart to you, and I confess with my mouth And I believe in my heart that, Jesus, you are the King of kings, and you have risen from the dead. And I say with a loud voice that because of those things, and my belief in you, I am saved. 
In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer along with me, you said it, believed it in your heart, I want to invite you to take communion with us today. I want to read some scripture to you. Pastor Mark talked about this scripture in his message. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and the Apostle Paul writes this. He said, this is 11 verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given it, he, give it, he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after he took the cup, after supper, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A person ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment upon themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. We take communion every week here at New Hope, and it can be very easy for it to become a routine, so much so that you don't truly examine yourselves, as Scripture tells us we are supposed to do before taking the communion elements and doing this in remembrance of Jesus Christ. But right here, the Apostle Paul tells us that we must examine ourselves before we take of these things. I like to, to look at this time of communion as a, a spiritual cleansing of the palate of what led to this moment. So here I am, this morning, I've had a time of worship with music, a time of worship with the message. I've heard God's word, and now I hear I am communing with the Lord, and I lift my heart to Jesus, and I say, Lord, I repent of the sins I know of, and I repent of the sins I don't know of. Lord, I just want to be clean before you. Forgive me. Examine my heart, Lord. I want to be clean before you. And I think when we do that and we examine ourselves truly, that is when what Pastor Mark's talking about, being in the church, being on the move, all those things. When we truly examine our own hearts, that's when we turn aside all of those things that we think are important to us, and we truly then put our focus in the right place, which is on Jesus with a fresh slate, a clean slate. And we can be the person and the ch that the church needs us to be because we are the church, as Pastor Mark said. So I'm going to pray, and then we will take these elements together. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the bread that represents your body that was broken and for the, the cup that represents, represents the blood that was poured out. Lord, cleanse us of our sins. We want to be righteous before you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may take these elements. Amen. Just want to thank you this morning for joining us here at New Hope Online and being a part of this worship service. It has been an honor to be here with you and spend this time with you and, and, and singing worship with you, hearing God's word with you and the message. Again, we look forward to next week, which is part two of the series, where we'll hear more about worship and what that means when it comes to having a movement of the Lord in our community, in our country, and in the world. And so join us next week at the same time, 10 a.m., to hear that message from Pastor Mark. I want to tell you that right now we're going to do our online giving. If you want to participate in giving to New Hope Community Church, we'd love to have you do that. We have information and links that pop up on the side of the page here in our comments section that you can click and you can give. There's also some information on the screen right now where you can, you can give online by going to newhopechurchtn.org. You can go to our New Hope app, which is available, and you can give there. 
You can also mail in your tithe and offering to New Hope Community Church, 605 Wilson Pike, Brentwood, Tennessee, 37027. And I believe we're adding a text feature as well that will be on the, the screen where you can text uh, NH Gives, I believe, and you will receive a message on how you can give through text. So we thank you so much for the ways you are, are giving to the church. When you give, you are not only supporting New Hope Community Church, you're also supporting the ministries that we support and the missions that we support. And there are many out there right now that are struggling because we know what the times are like. But you're also giving to people that we can help and give through benevolence and give through ways that we as a church can support those who are in need right now. So when, you, when you're giving, you, you, are, you are contributing to the work of, of the kingdom of God. So let me pray a blessing over those tithes and offerings right now. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for how you provide for us. Lord, we know there are those out there right now who may be struggling. Some may have lost jobs. Some may be looking for what's next for them. So I pray supernatural blessing upon them right now, that you would give them the job that they need, that you would get them back to work, that you would restore this land so, Lord, they can can be provided for again, because I know you said you care for us, Lord. If you care for the birds and, and the fields, Lord, you care for us much more. So, Lord, I pray for your provision. I thank you that you provide for us, that we can give to you, your church, Lord. I pray you would multiply these tithes and offerings and use them in ways that we don't even realize right now, Lord supernatural ways that you're going to to use these gifts and this giving for your kingdom. And I thank you for it and a blessing upon everyone who gives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A couple of things I want to tell you about as you're, as you're going and doing those, those giving things right now. We have our connect groups that are going to be starting, a new round of connect groups that are going to be starting in May. And you can sign up and go to our website right now. You can go to the New Hope app. You can cl click Connect Groups, and you'll see the new Connect Groups that are available. I want to encourage you right now to go there. I know your mind might not be in that frame of mind at this moment, but go to Connect Groups, click, and you can look through the summer options that we have available that are going to be starting in mid-May. And I want you to sign up for those groups and, and get involved and in, in getting connected for what's going to be taking place in the summer. So we'd love to have you do that. Pastor Mark mentioned this in the beginning of the service as well. If you are watching this service, we'd love to hear from you. In fact, one of the things I'd love for you to do in the comments section, if you could just type in there, where are you watching from? Are you watching from Nashville, Brentwood? Are you in another state? Tell us the town that you're watching from. We'd love to hear whether you're on the New Hope Online app or YouTube or Facebook Live. We'd love to hear where you're watching the service from so we can interact with you and engage with you uh, in this in this time. We'd, we'd love to hear those things. So you can go to our webpage and find out more information about the church, but I want to encourage those who are living in this area, Nashville and Brentwood, Tennessee, Franklin, and other parts, just to go to our webpage, go to our app, and join one of our connect groups. We'd love to have you be a part of that. And so... Thank you so much for joining us at this time. It's been a blessing to be here with you. We look forward to being here next week at the same time with you at 10 a.m. And to close us out, what I want to do is just sing this song. And right where you are in your living room, sing this with me. This will be the last thing we're going to do. We're just going to sing the doxology. Let's just lift this up, and I'll try and do it. Here we go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great day.